inspired by ancient architecture and engineered for modern sound. I present version 18 of my 3D printed speaker series. Every detail, every angle, all designed with purpose, but a few questions remain. Why this shape? How does it sound? Join me as we dive into the design, the challenges, and the sound that this speaker creates. Don't miss out. Hit that subscribe button and let's get started. First and foremost, it is a three-sided pyramid enclosure with a single tapered vent port. The driver size is 4.5 inches, so larger than the last few iterations. It remained modular and still uses the same motor from version 17 that's based around two ferrite magnets. The plates are CNC'd plates that PCBWay made for version 17's video. Everything above the motor is new though. I shortened the voice coil former, changed the spider design, and moved to carbon fiber PETG for most of the printed parts. The enclosure was large enough that it had to be sectioned into five pieces to print on a 256 millimeter cubed bed, and the port was printed in three pieces. Doing this allowed me the internal volume necessary to coerce a bit more low-end excursion and extension out of the driver. The enclosure was stuck together with two-part epoxy to seal up any air voids between the parts. The vent for the enclosure starts out at 40 millimeters and ends at about 62 millimeters over a distance of 400 millimeters. Overall, the design is sleek and modern, but we will see if it actually performs. Taking a look inside the speaker with a section cut, we can get a closer look at the individual components and how they work with each other. Starting with a redesigned surround and a newly improved cone interface for the surround. I also cut weight by flush mounting the former instead of it sleeving over the cone. And I'm back to a flat spring spider that secures in with printed thread in the main body. The voice coil is an overhung design this time with a single layer of 34 gauge wire. Again, the motor is reused from version 17, sporting two ferrite ring magnets. The port mounts into the rear of the box and follows the rear edge up to the top of the enclosure, where it flares out before exiting to atmosphere. Choosing the pyramid shape may not have been optimal, but I thought it was a fun experiment to try different shapes and see how they perform. On to the cone now. A huge change for version 18. It's printed in carbon fiber PETG using arachne mode in the slicer to get the wall dimensions accurate at 0.5 millimeters, and to ensure the support features are properly printed into the speaker as designed. Lastly, a lip was added at the top for the surround attachment and alignment. The spider is another big change for version 18. Using a flat spring design, however, it is still TPU, just at 70D for shore hardness instead of 50 to 60A like the surround. However, that is it for the major changes, so we're going to move into a build montage and play test, but before that, a word about today's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is the ultimate platform for makers and professionals alike, offering top-notch PCB manufacturing, CNC machining, and even 3D printing services. Their precision and quality are unmatched, whether you're creating a simple PCB or a complex mechanical part, Ready to take your designs to the next level? Visit PCB Way using the link in the description below or on screen.
Now on screen is the DATS graph that was pulled from the driver. The motor again shows that it's set right with the blue bump on the impedance. The speaker isn't the strongest, but it still produces 77 decibels at 1 watt 1 meter. It also has an FS of 55 hertz, meaning it gets into the lower octaves. The moving mass has also dropped due to the changes coming in now on the MMS at 11.3 grams for a 4.5 inch driver. It does seem I shorted myself about 1 ohm of impedance though and wire in the winding as it's only showing 5.4 and I was aiming for 6.5 ohms. Moving on to REW though, we can now see the near field performance of this driver. So right off the top, we can see that it's a fairly flat response, more flat than any of the previous drivers. There is a small hiccup between the 500 and 1200 Hz range, otherwise it's performing really amazing. Turning on previous versions though, uh, this is version 17, and overall version 18 is quieter at the same input voltage. It does appear flatter and it extends out into both the higher and lower frequencies better than version 17. So overall it is a significant improvement in the overall performance of the speaker. Um, and now as one or two comments have requested, I will also put the distortion graph up. I'm not sure how to interpret it at any level of expertise, so I'm not going to try. I'll just leave it here and I'll scroll over the range. Feel free to pause and check out the distortion at different frequencies and different harmonics. After that though, I am going to move on to the closing statements as that's all that I have for this speaker. So overall, I feel this speaker has improved on sound and quality compared to version 17, and I'm happy with the changes made as well as the look and feel of the carbon fiber parts. I will likely continue the use of carbon fiber parts in future builds. I do hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss the next video. Thanks.